All right, this problem is worth 10 points. So please, up at the top, get ready with a blink out of 10, and then record that when you're done. All right, the differential equation dy dx is equal to 1 16th y times y squared minus 9 has a slope field shown above. Let y equals f of x be the particular solution to this differential equation that passes through the point 3, 1. All right, it says to use the line tangent to the graph of y equals f of x at x equals 3 to approximate f of 3.2. Well, you can't use the tangent line to approximate if you don't have the tangent line. So that's what this problem is asking for. Um, we have the point already. We have 3 of 1, 3 and 1. But to get the m, we need to find dy dx at the point 3, 1. So if I do that, I'm going to get 1 16th times 1 times 1 squared minus 9. That's going to give me 1 16th times negative 8, which gives me negative 1 half. All right, so that is my slope. So all I need to do is just y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, which is 3. All right, so that's the first part of it. And then to approximate um, f of 3.2, the first thing that I'm going to do is just move that 1 over. So I'm going to have negative 1 half x minus 3 plus 1. And now I like to write it like this. So to approximate f of 3.2, it's going to be approximately equal to negative 1 half. 3.2 minus 3 plus 1, and I'm not even going to do anything with that other than leave it just like that. All right, that would give us three points. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, we're going to get one point for finding the slope. So if you found a slope of 1 half, you're going to get yourself a point. And then if you were able to write the equation of the tangent line, you get a point. And then if you were able to come up with the approximation, you got your third point. So three points for us. Okay, part B, find d squared y dx squared. So notice that they give us, and then is your answer an underestimate or overestimate? This will have to do with the concavity. So we'll deal with that when we're done. So um, the first thing that I'm going to do is take the derivative. I notice that I'm going to have to use the product rule. So this will be f and this will be g. I will also be using implicit differentiation. So f prime will equal 1 16th dy dx, and g prime will equal 2y dy dx. <coughs> All right, so then we're taking the derivative, so I'm going to get d squared y dx squared is equal to f prime times g, so 1 16th dy dx times g plus f times g prime. Okay, when we find that second derivative, we're not allowed to have dy dx's in it, so we're simply just going to substitute what dy dx is. So we're going to get 1 16th times 1 16th y, y squared minus 9, times the y squared minus 9, plus 1 16th y, 2y, times the dy dx. We just want to be real careful when we're writing it that we don't leave anything out which I don't think I did. All right, so we can leave it like that. If you want to simplify it a little bit, go ahead. I'm not going to do that. I'll just leave it big and messy. All right, so I found that part. And then we want to know, is this an underestimate or overestimate? Um, and it's going to be at the point 3, 1. So I am going to find the, oh, actually it was at 3.2. Um, so at 3.2, we are kind of over right there somewhere. Um, so when we're looking at the second derivative on this one, we don't actually have a y, specific y value that I can plug into it. Um, so I'm just going to be looking at um, on the slope field between, let's see, um, f of x, we know that, okay, um, if you look at here, 3.2 is going to be like about right here somewhere and notice the oops the y value there is going to be somewhere between 0 and 1 so you can pretty much pick a number between 0 and 1 to plug in for your y just so that you can get that and you will notice any number that you put in for y um, between 0 and 1 is going to give you a positive value. So um, the second derivative is going to be greater than 0 which means your function is going to be concave up. Right? If a function is concave up, um, no matter which way I write it, whether it's an increasing or decreasing function, it's a concave up function. Those are both concave up. If I draw the tangent line, please notice that the tangent line is going to be underneath the graph. So the approximation is going to be less than the original. So this, the approximation is, I'll say my answer 
is less than um, is and oops, we didn't say less than or greater than is an under estimate because um, there we go because at the point the second derivative is greater than zero. So that's what I would say for that one. Okay, we are going to get two points. We're going to get one point for getting this second derivative, and then we're going to get one point for saying it's an underestimate and y. So that is going to give us two points. All right, the next part we're going to be, um, let's see, evaluate the limit as x approaches infinity f of x and the limit as x approaches negative infinity f of x. And it says justify your answer using the slope field. So they're wanting us to look at the slope field. So remember, f of x would be the solutions that we see when we're looking at the slope fields. All right, so if I'm looking at 3, 1, I'm just going to try to draw what's going on. It looks like I'm heading down this way, and then it looks like I'm going to be flattening out as I go this way. So that's pretty much what my picture is going to look like. All right, so if I'm finding the limit as x approaches infinity, so you'll notice that when I'm, I'm following this, as I keep going and keep going and keep going, that is going to equal zero. And then if I'm going heading towards negative infinity, please notice it's flattening out till I get to a y value of three. Um, and it just says to justify your answer, I would probably say as x approaches infinity, f of x, will have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. And then as x approaches negative infinity, f of x will have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 3. So as long as your x makes x explanation is something like that. You should be good to go. All right, this point is going to be um, two points. If you said that you got zero and you had a reason why, you got a point for that one. And then if you said the second one was three with a reason, you also got a point for that one. So that was worth two points. All right, part D. Still dealing with this differential equation. For some strange reason, they've not asked us to actually solve it, but I guess that's okay. It says, which initial conditions y of k y of 0 equals k lead to particular solutions that are increasing as x approaches infinity. So um, again, it didn't ask us to find the differential equation. They still give me a picture of the slope field. y of 0 equals k would be all of these points right here. So the initial condition, like just like they put a 3, 1 here, these would all be like 0, negative 2, 0, whatever. Okay, and they want to know the value of k. So which one of these five, negative two, whatever, um, that will give solutions that are increasing? Well, if the solution is increasing, we know that the slope is going to be, uh, be positive. So I'm going to be looking right on this graph. Where are my slopes positive? I noticed that my slope's positive between negative three to zero. So I would say between negative three and zero. So if k is anywhere between negative and three and zero, my slopes are going to be positive. And then I would say 3 on up, and I don't see what's going up, but it seems like it's just going to keep getting more and more and more. So I'd also say that when k is greater than 3, um, that would be, well, that would be the thing as, as well. And then it does ask us to justify um, the reason. I would probably say the slopes are positive on those intervals. I know in their solution, they said something about the solutions are in, on here, they said the solutions are increasing without bound. And on this one, um, they said um, the solution is increasing, but it is bound by the line x equals zero. So anything that you said along those points, you should be just fine. And um, you're going to get one point for getting the right answer. So you have to get both of those to get that. And then you need to give a reason for your answer. So that was out of two. So please make sure on the front page of this now, you do put your score out of 10.